Well, hello and welcome to today's topic of composition of functions. And so go ahead and get that in your notebook. And our definition of composition of functions is going to be combining the rules of two functions. Now, believe it or not, we've all done compositions of before, whether it was in algebra or geometry. We probably just haven't used the term composition of functions. So let me give you a quick example. A circular garden with a radius of 15 feet is to be covered with topsoil at a cost of $1.25 per square foot of garden space. So can you picture this? We have a circular garden, radius of 15, and basically I just want to cover this garden in topsoil. I just want to fill all this top part of my garden with topsoil, something people do every summer. Determine, so part A says determine the area of this garden to the nearest square foot. All right, so I'm saying to myself, area equals, do you remember circle? Yep, you've probably got it, pi r squared. And I'm going to plug in my radius, pi times 15 squared. And it does say to the nearest square foot, so it wants me to use my calculator. Let me grab mine real quickly. And I'm just typing that in exactly how I see it on my screen, and I get the nearest foot, 707 feet squared. Okay, so basically I evaluated my first function. Now part B says, using your answer from A. So I am taking this output I got, and I'm going to input it into this problem. Using your answer from part A, calculate the cost of covering the garden with topsoil. Well, it's 707 feet squared times $1.25. And I've got $883.75. And that's it. You just composed two functions, whether you knew it or not. You took an input of 15 feet and got your output of 707. Then you use that as an input into this problem and got an output of 883.75. That's composing two functions. So let's go ahead and get this diagram in our paper and we'll relate it to that problem we just did. We inputted our radius of 15 feet into our problem and we got out an answer of F which I believe was 700 and, oh uh, shucks, was it 8 feet? Oh, sorry, 707 feet. Okay, and now that output from F, as you can read here, the output from F becomes the input into G. So now we took the answer we got out and we put it in here. We said take that 707 and multiply it by the 1.25. And our final output became our y value of our $883.75. That's composing two functions. Now, let's talk about the notation we're going to use. Okay, we can write it one of two ways. So let's write this down, and now let's put it into English for ourselves. Because you would also, besides being able to do the math, you need to be able to speak the math. This is red. F. Every time we see a parenthesis, we're going to say the word of. So F of G. Now I see a parenthesis. Of X. And notice these two just kind of close off what we opened, our, close off our two ofs. So this is read f of g of x. Let me give you another one. How would you read this one? Well, I would say start with g, g, and I see the parenthesis of f of x. And then again, those last two are just closing it off. Now, you'll either see it written with the parentheses like that, or, it can be written with a compose sign. They mean the same thing. For example, this time I would just read this F composed of G of X. 
F, this little circle, is my composed of G of X. We don't say fog, it's not F-O-G, it's a small circle, F composed of G of X. Likewise, if I wrote it this way, G composed of F of X. G composed of F of X. Now, either way you write it, the whole idea, and this is what I want you to star in your notebook, highlight it, do what you have to do, we want to make sure we work backwards. All right, we are working backwards, and I'll show you what I mean by that. If I have the function f of g of 5, okay, I want you to understand that we're going backwards. So I'm going to start, and I'm going to put an arrow underneath going backwards, and I want you to do the same. You're going to start on this end, and you're going to go towards the arrow tip. So I'm going to take 5, put it into g and take that output into f. So I'm taking 5, inputting it into g, taking that output into f. If I said g of f of 2, okay, backwards composition, that's the big deal, go backwards. I'm going to take 2, can you guess who I'm inputting that into? 2 into f and taking that output into G. Okay, likewise works the same way with that composition. If I said G of F, or G composed of F of 3, I'm still going backwards. 3, composing it into F, is the next term I see this way, and taking that output into G. So if you can remember, work backwards. Promise, this isn't that hard. In exercise 2 here, we're given f of x equals x squared minus 5 and g of x equals 2x plus 3. Find values for each of the following. So remember, this is called composition, and we're going to work backwards. So working backwards, I'm just going to put an arrow backwards, and we're going to start on the, the right side of the arrow, arrow. And we're going to say 1 is going to go into g, so the input goes into g, and g's output is going to go into f. Okay, so we're working backwards. So the first thing I need to do is take 1 into g, so I'm going to find g of 1. So here's my g function, 2x plus 3. Remember, I'm putting that 1 into the x, so I'm getting 2 times 1 plus 3. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 3 is 5. Now I take the output from g and put that into f. So now I'm going to find f of 5. Here's the f function. So I've got x squared minus 5. So I've got 5. Notice my parentheses. Square goes on the outside minus 5. 5 squared is 25. Minus 5 is 20. And that's my final answer. So let's take our time and try another one. Remember, composition, we're going to work backwards. So let me just put the arrow there. So I'm saying 2, the input 2 goes into f, and f's output goes into g. Okay, so I'm going to take first 2 into f. So I'm going to find f of 2. So that's 2 squared minus 5. 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 5 is negative 1. Now I'm going to take f's output and put that into g. So now I'm going to find g of negative 1. So that function was the 2x plus 3, so that's 2 times negative 1 plus 3, that's negative 2 plus 3 is positive 1. Alright, let's see if you've got it. Let's just set up what our pattern's going to look like. I'm going to start with the number 0 into function g, and that output is going to go back into g, and that's okay. You just follow the rules. Work backwards, 0 into g, and that output into g. So, the first thing I'm going to find is g of 0, and that's 2x plus 3, so that's 2 times 0 plus 3, which of course is 3. Now I'm taking that output and plugging it into g again, g of 3. So, 2x plus 3, 2 times 3 plus 3, 
2 times 3 is 6 plus 3 is 9. All right, let me give you three more. So I want you to pause it, try each one on its own, and then go back and replay it and see if you've got the same answers. Now, remember, it's the same um, rule, just maybe written a little differently. We're still going backwards. Okay, so I'm still taking negative 2's input into G and G's output into F. All right, like I said, pause it and see if you agree with my answers. Well, there you have it. Um, if you've got stuck on any of them, you can quickly check those answers. And if you get stuck, uh, feel free to go through and follow my work. But remember, we're just going backwards, and that's the whole key. All right, we're going to do the same idea. This time, instead of two functions written out as equations, we have two graphs that are functions. So just take note that this one does say f of x, and this one here does say g of x, so you know which graph to look at. So we're going to set it up the same way. I see composition, functions composed in each other. So I'm just going to remind myself that the 2, I go backwards, 2 goes into F, and that's output goes into G. All right, so my first function I'm finding is F of 2. Okay, so I go to my F graph, which is this red one. I go over to 2, and I ask, what is the height of the graph? So as I go over to 2, the height looks like it has a height of 3. Now I take that output and I plug that one into g. So now I'm finding g of 3. Now I'll go to my g graph. I'll go over to 3 on the x-axis and find the height of my graph. And it has a height of 3 as well. So my final answer is 3. Let's try another one. Remember, going backwards for composition, negative 1 goes into g and that output goes into f. So the first thing I'm going to evaluate is g of negative 1. So I go to my g graph, which is this blue one. I'm going to go to negative 1 and find the height of my graph. It looks like 1, 2, 3, 4. I would say negative 5. Okay. Now I take that answer, and I'm going to compose that into f. So now I'm going to find f of negative 5. So now I've got to go to graph f, which is this red one here. Find my negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I would say it looks like it's at a negative 1 half. And lastly, uh, we have g of, g of 1, so 1 goes into g, and its output is going to go back into g. So I'm using the blue graph here for everything, the g function. So g of 1, I go to my g graph, I go to 1, its height is 3, and now g of 3, Going, I'm going back into G, it says, has a height of 3 as well. Okay, just like we did before, remember composition can be written this way as well. It's your turn to practice these three, so pause it, try it on your own, and see if we get the same answers. Remember to pause it. Well, there you have my answers, and hopefully you can follow that work. Um, <clears throat> again, if you have any questions, we'll be there early in the morning. Let's try a few more. Alright, so this is the exact same idea, except instead of plugging a number in, you're kind of plugging the variable x in. Watch how it's the exact same thing. I'm going to take x, input it into g, and take g's output into f, just like we said before. Work backwards. So basically, I'm finding g of x. Now, do you have to do anything, or do you already know what that answer is? Well, g of x, it says right here, oops, is 5x plus 4. So you don't have to do anything except write it down. Now here's where you just have to be careful. You are now taking that answer and plugging it into f. So I am finding f of 5x plus 4. Okay, now it's just a little messier than, you know, plugging one number in. You're plugging in the quantity 5x plus 4. So it's 3x minus 2, and I'm going to replace just this x with the 5x plus 4. So I've got three parentheses, the quantity 5x plus 4, close that, minus 2. Now, just think basic algebra. What does your gut tell you to do with this 3 out front? Hopefully you're saying distribute. So that gives me 15x plus 12. Now I'm not going to distribute it to this 2, it's outside, and then a minus 2. And as I clean that up, I get 15x plus 10. And there's nothing to solve, you're just done, you're going to leave it just like that. 
So let's try another one. Let's write it out. I'm taking x into f into g. So the first thing I'm finding is f of x. Now, do you actually have to find it, or did they tell it to you? Remember, they told us f of x is 3x minus 2. Now you're plugging that output into g. So I need to find g of 3x minus 2. All right, so I'm going to take my g of x function, which is 5x plus 4, and just like we did before, we're going to replace the x with this quantity. So I've got 5 times the quantity, 3x minus 2, close the parenthesis, and then a plus 4. So again, hopefully your gut's telling you to what with that 5? Distribute. So that's 15x minus 10 plus 4 gives me 15x minus 6. Here's a nice little multiple choice question to practice, but same idea. Given f of x and g of x, find f of g of x. All right, so f of g of x. So I see composition. I'm going to write it out. Remember, I'm going this way. I'm going to take x, input it to g, take g's output into f. All right, so the first thing I'm finding is g of x, which is nice. I don't have to do anything. I just tell, read the problem. g of x is x minus 5. And now I'm plugging that into f, so I'm finding f of x minus 5. Okay, now remember, f of x is x squared, so I have to substitute this into the x. So I get the quantity x minus 5 squared. Now, this is taking us back to Algebra 1, probably. When something is squared, it really means you have it how many times? You've probably guessed it, twice. So I'm just going to write that quantity out twice. x minus 5 times x minus 5. And now, to make it match one of my multiple choice answers, I have to use that four-letter word, FOIL. And maybe it's been a while, maybe it hasn't. I'll walk you through FOIL real quick. It's the first, that's what F stands for, multiply the first of each set, x times x is x squared. Outer, for the O, multiply those outermost ones, so that looks like a negative 5x. Inner, multiply these two inner ones touching, it's another negative 5x. And then last, the last from each set of parentheses. Notice I'm going to get a positive 25. Now lastly, I just need to clean that up, and the only terms I'm concerned, concerned about are these two, because they're like terms. Do they cancel or do they make negative 10? Well, if you owe $5 and you owe 5 more, that doesn't necessarily cancel out. That means you owe $10. So I would say I get, try to squeeze it in up here, sorry, x squared minus 10x plus 25. So I'm going to go with choice 4 on that one. So hopefully not too bad, and that foil sounds a little familiar to you. We're going to be doing quite a bit of foiling this year. All right, so we want you to copy these tables down for our next example here. This table, notice, is f of x. It has the f of x function, and this table is g of x. So feel free to pause it, copy those down. And now we're going to evaluate the same type of function. This time it's just a table instead of a graph or an equation f of g of 2. So again, composition, I'm going to work backwards. I'm going to write out my pattern. I'm going to take 2, input it into g, take g's output into f. Okay, so the first thing I'm finding is g of 2. So make sure you're looking at the g function. Remember, that's this term here. And you're always plugging it into x, remember. So if I go to the x, here's my x, so to speak. If I plug 2 in, the output is 4. Now, I'm going to find f of 4. So I'm going to take 4 into the f graph. Remember, this is the f graph with the f. We're plugging it into the x column, or the x row, I should say. Find 4. f of 4 spits out an answer of 3. Okay, let's give another one a whirl. We've got g composed of f of 8. So working backwards, I'm taking 8 into f and f's output into g. Now if you can do this without writing that step down, by all means go ahead. I'm just trying to be very specific that we're going backwards. So the first thing I'm finding is f of 8. So I'm going to my f table. I'm always plugging into x. I'm finding 8. Here's my 8 and its output is 7. 
Now I'm using that as my G input. So now I'm finding G of 7. Put 7 into the G table, of course on the x-axis. Input 7 and it spits an output of 6. Okay, just like we did before, let me clear this off and give you a couple to practice. Alright, I just squeezed them in at the bottom of your screen. You've got f of f of 6 and g of f of 4. So pause it and see if you get the same answer I did. Well, I've got my work at the bottom. I've got 1 for the first one, and hopefully you can follow that work, and 2 for the second one. Well, believe it or not, that does it for us tonight on composition of functions. So if you have any questions, we'll be there nice and early in the morning, or feel free to stay after school. Have a great night.